In our last video, we dived into setting up TradingView webhooks. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend checking it out first to get up to speed with the prerequisite, link in the description. In this video, I am adding another element, which is the Google Sheet interacting with API server, and using Google Sheet as a database, for having more visualization which the trading view can't provide. This is just the basic feed data, but in future videos, I will be covering how to visualize your strategies and also to take any action like entering or exiting an order manually. Not going to walk through the details of the Google Sheet app script here. Google Sheet app script is a dynamic scripting platform which integrates and enriches the static functionalities of the Google Sheets. Google has provided a very good online editor which helps us write the scripts, execute them or even debug them on the editor itself. The best part for us is the scheduling of executing those scripts, which is critical for trading data. One basic thing we need to figure out in Google Sheet is the outgoing IP address, if you have firewall set up in your API server. In my previous video, I had recommended using a firewall, since you were dealing with trading platforms and sensitive data might be present on the API server. Once you identify them, then you can whitelist those IPs to provide access for data feed. Okay, let me start with how we can figure that out. There are two methods to this, one is using the generally available website called httpbin.org. Just fire and get API specified like this. It will respond the origin, which is the Google Sheets outbound IP address. Let's save and run the script. First time, it will ask to review the permission, since if the script was downloaded from the internet, it's always better to review them and make sure you are not providing some access to someone without reviewing. Once you review and accept, you can execute the script. If you see the console, IP is printed there. Couple of things to note here. First to note down, it returns two IPs. I have observed that if you run manually from the editor, it returns two, and if you run using a scheduled way, which I will show will return just one. Second to note down, if you execute them multiple times, it will return multiple IPs, this is because the Google Sheet is running in the cloud and Google has load balanced with multiple IPs. We need to find all the IPs to whitelist them, since we do not know which IP it will use. Or, you can use the subnet alone, but there will be an access hole if someone else has some IP in the same subnet. Let's find all the IP by scheduling them and whitelist all of them. To schedule the script, go to the triggers menu on the left, add a trigger and select the function to be called. Select the event source. Here, we will use the time driven and select the minute schedule. Save them and again it will ask to review the permission first time. Once it's saved, you can see the executions in the execution menu. The executions will show the manual run also, if you see here I had executed 4 times before and it shows up here. Now, every minute we will see the time driven entry also here. Yes, we got the first one. Let's see the console log by clicking the entry. If you see here, it displays the IP, and this time just one as I mentioned earlier. If you don't want to call some API to an external site, then we can find the IP with our own API server. But for this, first you need to temporarily disable the firewall on the API server. Find all the IPs and then enable the firewall back with whitelisted IPs. Here is the simple script to get the IP address. It's nothing but the remote address field in the request. Just parse them and send it back. Let's start the API server. Now, let's get back to the app script. Here I have written another function to get the IP address from our own API server. AppScript supports system script variables, which can be set in the project settings. Here, I have my API server IP set and have used the variable here in the URL. Let's save and run the script. See, we got the IP address. Ok, now we have basic connectivity. Let's get the data feed for BTC USD. Here I have the 1 minute chart and have already created an alert for this. Since we want the data feed every minute, I am selecting a threshold which will be satisfied all the time. So, for every bar close, we will get an alert. We need more details which can be used offline to derive more analytical data, so sending the payload with these details. Along with that I am also sending the alert type, which I will be using in the backend to differentiate between data feed, and any strategy we set alerts for. The help in trading view has more parameters which can be sent. Not but least, we need to set the endpoint to which the alert needs to be sent. I will show this endpoint implementation and data parsing soon. Here, we have received an alert. You can see the alert got all the details which we want. Let's get to the backend implementation. Here, let's create a route for the endpoint. The logic is simple, since we are not going to use the API server as a database. All we need is to parse and dump the data to a file and return immediately. 
In any API call, we should not be doing any CPU intensive operation, it's always better to do offline processing. Here in the database file, all I am doing is, first select the file where I need to write. This is based on the alert type and I can have more files to limit the file size for quicker read. Then, lock the file for writing, dump the content, unlock the file and return. The reason to lock the file is, since the Google Sheet will later ready and empty the file. We don't want two calls to corrupt the content for any reason. Let's run the script now. We already got an alert from TradingView. Now, let's see the content of datafeed.json. Here we have one entry written by the API handler. Since we now have the incoming data stream here to the API server. Now, it's time to implement the read data which will come from Google Sheet. I am implementing the get feed API call. This handler reads the content from the file. It's in string format, convert it to JSON dictionary. There is a for loop to handle, in case there are multiple entries in the file, and we need to send it in as a list. Once it's read, move the file pointer to the start, and then empty the file. Since we don't want to read the duplicate data which is already read and processed in Google Sheet. I'm starting the API server with both APIs implemented and starting them. Now, switch over to the Google Sheet, where we will call the get feed API, and process and insert them into the Google Sheet for charting. Here is my function, which calls the get feed API. Which returns the dictionary with all the ticker symbols, close, open price etc. In the insert data, I am doing a post processing of the received data and performing a RSI calculation, and inserting them along with the data. This is the standard RSI calculation. You can have any of your indicators calculated and inserted here. I ran this script for a while using the minute scheduler, and you can see the data being inserted into the sheets. The data size is limited to 200 entries, since I have a logic in code to limit the row size to 200. You can store as much as you want based on your need. The code shown here keeps a max of 200, which means the oldest entry will be removed if it exceeds 200. Once you have the data in Google Sheet, then you can plot all the charts using the standard charting tools available. I am going to first plot the close price in one and then the RSI in another one, and lay it out one after the other. Now you have a live trading chart in your Google Sheet. This video is just about explaining how to have your own dashboard customized for your needs. Since Google Sheet is more powerful in terms of playing with numbers. You can have your own UI dashboard without even knowing anything about UI development. Hope this video gave you a very basic idea about having your own database in UI charts and summary without even have to know more about database or UI development. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to watch similar videos and help my channel. Thank you, see you in another video.